anybody ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. And as we get ready for the word this morning, I just want to say one thing as we get ready for the word this morning. Um, our youth church isn't open every Sunday, but parents, it is not a problem for your children to be here in worship. And if you have to bring the Hot Wheels track, if you actually bring the whole Hot Wheels set, if the Hot Wheels rolls up here, it is what all right. Say? Because I grew up in a time where there was no youth church. Youth church is a luxury. On their back row with our toys, with our tic tac toe sets. But you know what? We were learning. We were learning stuff. Yeah. You know, we could imitate that deacon prayer. Our oh, father, our oh, father, Father Abraham, Father Jacob, yeah. Father me too. Father, we want to thank you for letting our golden Romans roll on just a little bit longer. Father, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning yeah. that our beds didn't come out cooling boards. Cooling boards. I heard that. So it is not a problem to bring your children to church. It's not a problem if your children get home and imitate me. Because they were listening. They were listening. So don't think that on the Sundays that the youth church is not open, that you have to stay home. No, bring them to church. Bring them to church. Bring them to church. And again, if you have to bring, if you have to bring, I don't know what the pop, the toys and action figures are, but bring the whole game. Bring all the Marvel game. Bring all the DC game. Whatever it takes. But don't stay home. Because here we go, Dr. Dean. Because God's got a word. Amen. You can find it right here. Amen. Right. Anyway, anybody ready for the word this morning? Alright, everybody on your feet, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. After we do our Bible read, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, and chapter 15, or, uh, chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. But before we get into that, come on, get your Bible, your iPhone, your Galaxy Tab, whatever you have the word on, and repeat these words after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do exactly what it says I can do. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm a doer. And not just a hearer. This is the word of faith for my life. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And I shall be all the better after having heard God's word. Amen. As you may stand in second chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, and 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. I, I don't know if you guys are smiling at me up in the booth, but if, if you guys give me just a little bit more in the monitors, I'd appreciate it without causing a lot of feedback. Ooh, yeah, that's, ooh, that's good. That's good right there. Yeah. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, and 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. And we're reading from the message translation this morning. Let's read together. One, two, three. Here we go. One day, the king of the prophets came to Elisha and said, You can see that this place where we're living under your leadership is getting cramped. We have no elbow room. Give us permission to go down to the Jordan, where each of us will get along. We'll build a room in your place, Elisha said. Go ahead. One of them said, Please come along with us. He said, he went with them. They came to the Jordan and started chopping down trees. As one of them was felling the timber, his axe head flew off and sank in the river. Oh, no, master, he cried out, and it was borrowed. The holy man said, where did it sink? The man showed him the place. He cut off a branch and tossed it at the spot. The axe head floated up. Grab it, he said. The man reached out and took it. Early in the morning, a servant of the holy man got up and went out. Surprise! Horses and chariots surrounding the city. The young man exclaimed, Oh, master, what shall we do? He said, Don't worry about it. There's a more outside. Can we get a new on the top? There's more on our side than on their side. What do you say? One more time before we go to the next verse. There's more. Don't worry about it. There are more on our side than on their side. Y'all missed a great place to stop right there. Go ahead, next verse. Then Elisha prayed, Oh God, open his eyes and let him see. The eyes of the young man were open and he saw a wonder. The whole mountainside, full of horses and chairs, of fire surrounding Elisha. When the 
Prepare me to the task. Unless you pray to God, strike these people blind, and God struck them blind, just as Elisha said. Then Elisha called out to them, Not that way, not this way. Follow me, and I'll lead you to the man you're looking for. And he led them into Samaria. As they entered the city, Elisha prayed, Oh God, open their eyes so they can see where they are. God opened their eyes, they looked around, and they were trapped in Samaria. Somebody give them all that hand of praise. I want to get back into our Days of Elijah series this morning, Days of Elijah, part six. Just look at your neighbors, you're going to see and say, God can. God can. Eternal God, our Father, we just ask for your anointing, your blessing, your peace, and your power upon this word. Sit David, blow down, dear Lord, let your spirit stand up in me. God, please don't preach and teach a good word, but preach and teach a word that will do us some good. Let it touch, let it heal, let it deliver. Let it lift the burden, loose the shackle, let it set somebody free. Let it save, let it sanctify, and also let it edify. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody holler, amen. 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 I want to talk this thing this morning. Days of Elijah, part six. God can. Just elbow somebody tell them God can. God can. Uh, uh, when we last joined our hero, the prophet Elisha, the Lord had used him to heal Naaman of his leprosy. And by now, the word has gotten out that Elisha is indeed operating in the mantle of Elijah. And many young men are coming to be a part of the school or guild of the prophets. One of the reasons why I believe they are coming this way at this time, Pastor Joshua, is because there is a perceived vacancy. Because Gehazi has now turned white with leprosy mm. after attempting to jack Nathan. Watch out there. Ah! 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 I thought that would make it clear that what happened. But Gehazi thought that even though Elisha refused the offering, that he should have accepted the offering. And so when he came back, uh, the prophet Elisha said, where you been, Gehazi? And he said, I ain't been nowhere. He said, was not my spirit with you when you stopped naming? Was not my spirit with you when Naaman gave you those five suits and them gator shoes? He said, he said, is this a time for me acting like that? He said, and so now the leprosy that was on Naaman is going to stick to you. And you know, in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 12 and 17, if the leprosy overtook your whole body mm. and your body became white, you were considered to have been healed of your leprosy. So I believe that in this chapter that the, the Gehazi is probably away because they're trying to see what's going to happen with him. So today's adventure doesn't feature Gehazi at the left hand or right hand of Elisha, but it features an unnamed servant of the prophet Elisha. So as I said, with Gehazi absent, and people now understanding that Elisha has the mantle of Elijah on his life and that the Most High God is with him. Many people are enrolling at that place, at the place where they meet, that the place has become too small. And that's where today's adventure begins. Y'all ready for this? Teach God. So, so in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, it says, One day the guild of the prophets came to Elisha and said, You can see where the place we are living under your leadership is getting cramped. We have no elbow room. He says, so give us permission to go down to the Jordan. Now understand, look at somebody say, the Jordan is always a place of transition. When, whenever you read about the Jordan in the Bible, it's always a place of transition. Jesus. It was even a place of transition for the prophet Elisha because he and Elijah crossed over the Jordan. The mantle fell to Elisha and he took that mantle and he hit the Jordan and walked back over. Before the children went into the children of Israel, went into the promised land. They had to cross over the Jordan. Even Jesus, before he started his ministry, had to be baptized in the Jordan River. And I don't know who I'm talking to up in here, but I'm excited in my spirit because there are about three or four people who are at your Jordan this morning. You are here to the place where God is about to transition. You not transition you out of the earth and into eternity, but God is about to transition you into another place of destiny in the middle that he has given you right here on the planet Earth. If Preach I'm talking to you, Preach. just lift your hands and shout, that's me, that's me. 
so, so, so the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, he says, he says, let us go down to the Jordan where each of us will get along. We'll build a room in your place. Now, I like this because they check in with Elisha before they start building. Because right. Elisha represents the presence of God. I need somebody to understand that even if you have a noble idea of what you want to do, you need to check in with God to make sure it's the time for you to do it. You got to make sure you ask God about it. That's good. Because, because doing the right thing at the wrong, wrong time is just as bad as doing the wrong thing. Amen. That's good. Are, are you with me this morning? So, so they say, they say, they say, we'll That's do good. the law, we'll build a room in your place. And this is like, go ahead, go ahead and do it. And, and one of them had the, had the wisdom to say, okay, we're going to build this thing. He said, but wait a minute, you stand here? And we go into the Jordan. They go back to the prophet Elisha and they say to him, please come with us. Tell you that you got to take God along wherever you, you got to take God along. You got to take the anointing and the presence and the power of the kingdom of God with you wherever you go. And the prophet Elisha answered, he said, certainly. And he went down with them and they came to the Jordan. They came to the Jordan. Tell somebody something's about to jump off. Something's about to jump off. Tell somebody off. Say, something's about to jump something. off. They, they came to the Jordan and, and they started chopping down trees. I'd ask David to to the shed and see if we had an axe, but we didn't have one, so I got to use my microphone as an axe. They came to the Jordan and they started topping down, stuck chopping down trees. As one of them was felling a timber, his axe head flew off. No, I'm not gonna take the axe head off the mic. His axe head was getting nervous. He's like, please don't do that. His axe head fell off and fell into the river. Now, for those of you that remember your high school history when they used to teach history, uh, Amen. This was doing what was known as the metal age. Mm -hmm. So they were just learning at this time how to forge weapons out of metal and how to forge tools out of wet metal. And it was a very involved process to form iron into metal. This young prophet had borrowed an axe from somebody who had taken the time to forge an axe out of iron. So when the axe head flew off, he was in deep, deep trouble. Mm. The axe head flew off, and it flew off into the water. Oh, and he cried out to Elijah. He said, oh, my goodness, it was borrowed. Oh, and I don't know who this is for. Perhaps it is only for me. But I need somebody to know this morning that the almighty God will not allow you to lose that which you borrowed to build the kingdom of God. Y'all are hear me up in here. Let me say that again. Look up, look up, look. The almighty God will not allow you to lose that which you borrowed to build the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verses 29 through 30, he says, truly I tell you, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or fathers or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in Amen. this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields are with persecution, meaning that you have to go through some stuff, and in the age to come, eternal life. Tell somebody that which you borrowed to build the kingdom of God, he will not let you lose it. All right, all right. You lose it. So, so the holy man said, the holy man, delicious said, can y'all put that up? Second Kings chapter 6, the holy man, delicious said, where did it sink? My, my. The man showed him the place. He cut off a branch <laughs> and tossed it at the spot. And the axe head flew up. My, my. Now, a couple of things here. All right. A stick is not magnetic. How can a stick draw up something metal? Sometimes before we give up on what God can do, we have to go back to the place where we lost it. Wow. Oh, y'all not hear me again. Uh, to the places where our hopes and dreams sank. Back to the place. Oh, y'all not gonna like this part. Where you flew off the handle. My God. Watch out. Is there anybody here other than me? who can raise your hand and admit before God and these wonderful saints in this room that some stuff you lost was not due to the devil, but it was because you <laughs> flew off the handle, because you had the wrong understanding, and you flew off the handle. You showed your natural behind. Watch out there. And you lost stuff because you flew off the handle. If I'm talking to you, somebody shout hallelujah. I knew the one that I had couldn't be the only one. No. I knew I couldn't be the only one. He said, he said, is there anybody here who can say, you know what, I gotta go back to the place where I was. And is there anybody here who can say, I can know that I was on course. And I remember the day that I got off course. God says, go right 
back to the place where you lost it. And the, the prophet, he cut off a branch and tossed it at the spot, and the axe head flew up. Put, put it up in the NIV for me, David, 2 Kings 6 and 6. It, it says, the man of God said, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron flow. And I know some of you are saying, this may seem impossible. Pastor Blow, how can that happen? But my Bible declares, and Luke 1 and 37, in the New Century Version of the Bible, that my God can do anything. Is there anybody here who believes that God can do anything? My Bible declares in Luke 1 and 37 that nothing is impossible with God. My Bible declares in Matthew 19, 26, with man this is impossible, but with God here, all things are possible. I need you to elbow somebody and tell them with God, all things are possible. And, and, and he, can I push this thing a little bit further, Pastor Esther? Here's the thing about the stick in the axe head. There's there. no way that a stick should allow you to recover an axe head. No way. But it did. <laughs> and I don't know who this is for. I think it's for somebody here on the left side. You do not think that you can recover what you have lost. And you can't recover what you have lost. But the God that you serve can absolutely, positively recover that which you lost. I feel the spirit of Hezekiah walk. Somebody lift your hands and declare, I shall recover it all. I shall recover it all. I shall recover it all. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, it's recovered. And here's the thing, and God can use any tool he wants to to recover that which you have lost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, 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 the reason why some of us are about to miss out on the recovery. I'm sorry, I messed up this shot. The reason why some of us are about to mess up on our recovery is because we think that we have the right to choose what tool God can use in order to recover it. What you say? But we don't get that privilege. Tell somebody, you gotta ask God. You gotta ask God. To show you the tool that he's going to use. Right. This prophet, this young prophet, could have messed up. He said, What you gonna do with that stick? But I believe, I believe, I believe. This prophet knew the history of Israel. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 32 and 10. Well, by first of all, Moses raised a stick in his hand. Watch out there. And the children of Israel crossed into Phlebo. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 10, the Bible says that Jacob left home with just a stick in his hand. Mm. Y'all missed that. And when he returned home, he came back with a household that filled two large camps. In Exodus 12 and 11, the children of Israel were told to eat the Passover fully dressed with a stick in your hand. My, my, my. Somebody's getting this. In Exodus 15, 25, when the children of Israel got to the desert, the water was bitter. The water was nasty. The water was, you know, like some of these cities that are having water crisis. The water was messed up. But God said, he pointed to Moses and said, what's that in your hand? He said, use the stick. Moses took the stick. He threw it into the water, and the water turned sweet. Tell somebody, God, mm. I, I heard a poem that read something like this. It said, a basketball in my hands is worth $29.95. But in LeBron James's hands, it's worth millions of dollars. Hell, right. uh, a tennis racket in my hand is worth $49.95. But in Serena Williams' hands, it's worth billions of dollars. Oh so understand, love, a stick is nothing in your hands or my hand. But when our hand is in the hand of the Most High God, it's all that we need. The power is not in the stick, but the power is in the God who told you to use the stick. And whatever God tells you to use, if you use it, you will see results. Oh my God. And look what he said in verse 7. Look what he said in verse 7. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. He says, Grab it. He said. And the man reached out and took it. I look at somebody and say, Grab it. Grab it. Tell somebody, Grab it. Grab it. Tell somebody, Grab it. Grab it. Grab it means to take hold of. Grab it means to take authority of. Grab it, he said. The man reached out and took it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there is somebody right here. You see it in your dreams, and you get frustrated when you wake up because it's no longer there. There's somebody here. You're so close to it that you see it every day. God said, Stop getting upset, but reach, reach out, out and away. grab it. Look at your neighbor and say, Grab it. Grab it. Anybody here who believes that God can give my, you my, back my. everything the enemy stole, everything you let go, lift your hand and say, grab it. Grab it. 
Hold on. Put my slide up, baby, slide number three. Put my slide up, baby, slide number three. Look at your neighbor and help me preach this thing. Put your hand beside your right ear and hey. tell your neighbor, say, neighbor! Hey. It's restoration time! some praise. I've come to tell somebody that it's your time of restoration. I've come to tell somebody that it's your time of recovery. And if you believe I'm talking to you, then holler back at your boy. The God that we serve is a God of recovery. If you read the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, there was some lost sheep, and he left the 99 and went after the one. Understand, beloved, what you lose is so important to you that God will, what God will stop what he's doing, not only to go after you, but to go after that thing that you lost. The, in Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10, there was a lost coin. Anybody here have lost some coins? <laughs> lady was upset about some lost coins. But don't you know that God helped her find the coins? I don't know where you've lost coins to. I don't know if you've been scammed. I don't know if somebody promised to marry you from Africa or Asia and you sent the money to them and, they didn't, and you never heard from them again. But I've got good news for you that whatever coins you've lost in this season, God is going to allow you to recover your coins. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I thought at least one person would be saying hallelujah. I thought at least two people would be saying thank you, Jesus. Because whatever you lost, God has the power to allow you to recover it. Somebody lift your hand and say it's my season of recovery. Even in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 31, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 31, there was a, the story of a lost child. He, 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 got, he got full of himself and he went out in the world and did everything he was big enough and bad enough to do. But he came to his senses and he returned to his father. I don't know who I'm talking to, but understand, beloved, if you have a child that's out there, understand they are going to come back home. If you have a spouse that's out there, understand they are going to come back home. As a matter of fact, start planning the party right now because that which you lost in your family, that which you lost in your relationship, God is going to restore it. If God can make an axe head float, surely he can get your daughter off of drugs. If God can make an axe head float, surely he can get your son off the track out. If God can make an axe head float, surely he can get your husband saved. If God can make an axe head float, surely he can change the situation in your family. Is there anybody here who can say, I know that's right. And I'm going to be no, right. right there. Somebody shout oh, yeah. you know that. That's why Jesus said, remember, remember that man Jesus healed in John chapter 9, verse 25. He said, I don't know whether he was a sinner or not. But what I do know is that I was blind. Mm. And now I see. Well, now I see. Is there anybody here who has that testimony? I've had God do stuff in my life. I've had God recover stuff in my life that I have no idea how he did it. And the only thing I do is that I was like this and now I'm like that. And the only thing I know is that the most high God did it. Is there anybody who can elbow your name and say, whatever you need, God can do it. Somebody lift your hand and say, this is my time of recovery. This is my time of recovery. This is my time of recovery. So let's move on through this story, beloved. Let's move on through this story. Verse 8, throw verse 8 up Holy David. Verse 8 says, one time when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, after consulting with his officers, he said, at such and such a place, I want an ambush set. Hmm. Somebody hmm. needs to understand that the enemy is constantly out to ambush the people of God. Yeah. The enemy is, do you know the enemy is deciding right now? Well, when you go to staff meeting on Thursday, he's going to jack you up. <laughs> the enemy's already decided that when you go in to get into that circumstance or that situation, that conversation, he's going to jack you up. He's already decided that he's going to try to cause some stuff to go wrong with your car. He's going to jack you up. The enemy is setting you up for an ambush. But look at this, beloved. Tell right. somebody, he will not ambush me. No. <laughs> Tell somebody, the enemy's about to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> So the Bible says in verse 9, it says the holy man, the man of God, Elisha, sent a text message to the king of Israel. And he said, king, watch out 
when you're passing such and such a place because Aram has set an ambush mm. Check this out, beloved. When you and I live a life of praise unto God, the enemy cannot ambush us because our praise ambushes the enemy. Right. I was talking about three or four people who really knew what I was talking about. Yes, sir. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. Fill that up for me, Derek. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. It, 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 it says, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord said ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. There, you listen, beloved. Look at your name and say, you need to get here for praise and worship. You need to get, I, you need to get here for praise and worship because as our hands go up and as our praise gets loud, the God that we serve is setting an ambush for the enemy. Beloved, you and I don't realize how many explosions are happening behind us because God is clearing the way of every ambush so that we walk in peace and joy. Look at your neighbor and say your praise sets ambushes for the enemy. Every time you lift your hands, every time you glory hallelujah, that ambush that was set for the enemy is stripped and you walk through in peace. What Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 I will feel no evil. You know what? Mm. I'm asking God this week in my prayer time to give us all a peek of what happens in the supernatural My every God. time we praise him. Wow. Wow. Because if I believe that if we could see wow. the demons that are slain and defeated in our path. Mm. 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 Oh, oh. Oh. Good God. Speak. Speak. The, the enemy never has a problem with me when 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 I listen to to my hip hop collection. No, we don't. They have a problem with me. When I get in my old school hip hop and I'm listening to Public Enemy and all that, no, no, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. When, when I'm listening to, 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 to what's that, 104.3 in, in, in Orlando, 105.9, when I'm listening to the, to the, to the R&B, hip hop, drop it like it's hot stations, what you say? You know, I have a problem with me. But, but when I scroll down the dial to 88.3, watch out, or, 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 or 106.3, or, or Hope 99.5, when, when I start getting into a place of praise, isn't it amazing how your signal starts messing up? And isn't it amazing how people start calling your phone? The, the enemy doesn't have a problem when you're just doing what the world does, but when you start stepping into supernatural places, he wants to disrupt that because he understands that you begin to stay in that place with God, then every plan that he has planned to disrupt you will not happen. Beloved, you need to understand that your praise and worship has power. Yeah. All right, all right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Let me move on because that, that's, that's another message. I, I, I'm not trying to be so heavily bound, Pastor Joshua. That I'm not earth for goodly good. What you but I believe that we live in an era where God wants praise to erupt across the globe. Yeah. And the reason why I say this is because the enemy has so many of us as saints of God caught up in so much trauma and trauma yeah. that we don't have the time that we need to praise and worship yeah. God. We were so worried about this bill and that bill and this payment and that payment wow. that we're not taking the time to worship and yeah. magnify the God of our salvation. But I have a suggestion to you. Go ahead. Take your debit card, take your credit card, take your checkbook, throw it on the altar at home. Let your hands go yeah. up and say, God, I know that if you make an action flow, you can handle whatever's trying to handle me. Because this is my season of recovery. I'm not going to focus on that because it's a distraction. I'm going to focus on the God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the God who says the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Look at your name and say we got to change our focus. While our focus has been off, crazy people have raised, been raised up in governments all over the world. Crazy, insane folk. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, Russian, crazy. Asian, Korean, crazy, crazy. Yeah. insane folk yeah. have their hand on a button That's right. that can destroy God's creation. What can I do about it? I can praise my God. I can give my God glory. Because my Bible says that the hand of a king is in the, that the Lord turns the head of a king like a water course. My if God. I praise God, God can get every president, every dictator, every like, supreme leader saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why the Bible says in Romans that the creation is I'm so far off track. The creation is groaning, groaning. it's moaning, waiting for the sun Good. and God on the way on up to be revealed. But let me understand, like Maria said, God is not, we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. The creation, all these storms and dust storms and viruses are waiting for the sons and daughters of God to stand up and take us. Yeah. And so you can't go any further. This has to cease. This has to end. Somebody shout hallelujah. During COVID, you could not get on the daily prayer call. Because there were so many people logged on. Hello in here. Hello. You, you will be put in the waiting room. We had to expand our Zoom capacity to fit everybody into the waiting room, to fit everybody onto the Zoom call. Now, we're lucky if 25 people are. My God. Good. What happened? Took our foot off the accelerator. And the enemy knows that we can pray and praise for a season. But understand, after that, we take our foot off. Once the pressure is off, you take off foot off. And once the pressure is off, you gotta lean in anymore. Tell somebody lean in heavier. Tell me they lean in heavier. I want somebody to say you gotta lean in heavier. Are y'all still with me? So, so, so look at this. Verse nine. Verse nine. The holy man sent a message to the king of Israel. He said, "Watch out when you're passing this place, because the king of Aram sent an ambush there." So the king of Israel sent word concerning the place which the holy man had warned him. And this kind of thing happened over and over my, my. again. My, my. Is there anybody here who can testify that when you walk with Jesus, this thing happens all the time? Yeah. All the time. Is there anybody here who God gives you warnings? Don't yeah. take this road. You don't need to be friends with them. You don't need to hang out there. And understand, you don't have to give people an explanation as to why you do hang out with them. If God said you can't hang out with them, That's you can't hang, hang out. out. <laughs> we so worried about hurting folks' feelings. Come on, Doc. Everybody is not right for you and me in every season. Amen. What you say? Hello, in here, somebody. Go ahead, sir. God says you can't hang out with them. Hurt my God feelings. Says stop exchanging text messages and stuff with them. Leave the. Leave the oh. Go ahead, say it, say it. Help us. I'm going way off the subject, but can I tell y'all a story? Help us. A few years ago, my wife and I were doing marriage counseling with a couple. Wonderful couple, wonderful couple. And daughter was out the door. I mean, she was gone because <laughs> hubby worked on a job and there was this lady on her team who the wife said, I ain't feeling her. Don't hang around her. Mm. Hubby said, nah, it's not like that. It's not like that. Well, fast forward. Through a few rises and said on the sun, they were on a business trip. Hubby woke up, looked at the pillow next to her. It wasn't wifey on the pillow. What you it say? It was teammate on the pillow. What you say? Wife had been telling him, leave her alone. That's right. Transfer to another team. Tell your supervisor. As a matter of fact, he got transferred to another team, was put over a team, and then she asked to be transferred to his team. Wow. Wife would call the job during the middle of the day. Daughter was in his office. How you doing? Wife said, that's not the one. Hubby didn't listen. Ended up talking with us, trying to find a way to get his marriage back together. Mm. Understand, beloved, you can cut out a lot of drama yes, if you listen to God first. Yes. Tell listen to God first. Listen to God first. Y'all, I'm so sorry for these details, for these detours, but, let, but let's go ahead. That's why in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, having warned the dream, they didn't go back to Herod. They returned to their country by another way. So in verse 11, the king of Aram is upset. He called his officers together and said, tell me who is leaking information to the king of Israel? Who is the spy in our ranks? But check this out. Verse 12 says, but one of his men said, none of us, master, <laughs> the leak? none of us is the leak. None of us are spy. He said, it is the man of God, Elisha, the prophet in Israel. He tells the king of Israel everything you say, even what you whisper in your bedroom. What you say. Put up my set. Put up slide number four. Tell your neighbor, God is better than <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Watch out there. Watch out there. <laughs> he is everything. What you say? And that's why I don't subscribe to Alexa. Right. Amen. I'm not present. There, there, was, yeah, there, was, there, was, this, there was this a true story. Y'all knew this. It's a true story. This this couple was in New York, and their friends in Los Angeles said, "Unplug your Alexa quick." He said, "Because we're hearing everything that you're saying in your house, in our house." My God. Ooh, let that sink home. <laughs> i we'll tell you that God is better than Alexa. Right. Way better. Because God can warn. Right. Because not only is he always listening to us, he's always listening to our enemies. And if we listen to God, he will keep us a step ahead of the enemy. Amen. And I don't know about That's you, but God works. is so gracious unto me that God makes it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> is there anybody here can say that? Yeah. God makes me look smart and intelligent. God makes it look like I know what I'm doing. I do not know what I'm doing, but I trust and depend on the Most High God. Go ahead. And when I trust and depend on the Most High God, He makes it look like I know what I'm doing. I, I threw off the chain. We we should stand the deviation. I'm sorry, Come I got another get to it. I'm on. <laughs> we, we we once served in this church in Columbia, Maryland. And, and there was this evil elder at the church sent from the pit of hell. <laughs> <laughs> but she came up to me one day, she said, Pastor Blow, you know stuff. I said, about what? You know stuff. I listen to your messages and you're talking to me, you're talking about me. You know stuff. My, my, my. I don't know nothing. <laughs> but God knows. But God knows. <laughs> and when I submit myself to him, he tells me what to say. So don't get mad with me. Get mad with him. Because the word is supposed to correct, rebuke, and encourage. And if you're stuck in a place of rebuke, maybe you need to make your life a little bit differently. So shout to the Bible and say, God makes you look like you know what you're doing. What you say? I cue off the chain. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 37 and 23, that the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 139 and 4 in the New Century Version, Lord, before I even say a word, yeah, you already, already know it. So how does this work? God already knows what your enemy is about to say. So Amen. before your enemy even says it, God tells you so that you can be on alert. Hello and hear somebody. Mm. Let me move this thing along more time as I can't see the clock. I'm, is that all the time I have left? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm having to. All right, all right, we gotta open this up for bidding. We gotta open up this for bidding. Can, can, can I get, we're gonna start the bidding in 10 minutes. Can I have 10 minutes? 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 20 minutes. Okay, okay, we're gonna compromise. Okay, 15, okay, okay. We're well, like 17, okay, okay. 17, 17. Reset that thing to 17. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Let's finish the lesson. Verse 13. Somebody say verse 13. Verse 13. Look at this. We got 16 minutes and 54 seconds. I'm going. <laughs> The king said, go and find out where he is. Find I'll send someone and capture him. My the report mind. came back. He's over at his crib in Dalton. <laughs> now, now understand that this king of Aram obviously <laughs> didn't know what King Ahaziah did. King Ahaziah tried to capture the prophet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 1. And the first and second group of soldiers were roasted with fire because they had no reverence for God or the servant of the Almighty God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I've come to tell you that if you get in a place of relationship with God, God will even roast every enemy, every work of the enemy, every dance in the darkness that comes against you. Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, be a wall of fire around me. Somebody said again, Lord, be a wall of fire around me. Somebody said again, Lord, be a wall of fire around me. He roasted two companies of 50 soldiers. Then when the third company came out, the third captain said, Man of God, don't consider my wife. He's like, I got two small children. My, my troops got some children. He's like, he's like, look, look, just, 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 just don't roast me with fire. I, I'm just the messenger. The king asked you to come to the palace. And he says, Sish, and the Lord said, now you can go with him because he came in the right spirit. <laughs> That tells me that we can't just welcome every spirit into our environment. Wow. You, you see, many of us are willing to welcome any kind of spirit oh, in order good. to get where we that's want good, to go. Pastor. But God good, says, Pastor. if you trust me, you don't have to compromise with that's demonic good, spirits in order to get where you need to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Verse, 
verse 14 of 2 Kings chapter 6. Verse, four, verse 14 of 2 Kings chapter 6. It says, so he dispatched horses and chariots, mm. an impressive fighting force. They came by night and surrounded the city. Uh -huh. Beloved, understand that the enemy and witches and warlocks, you may think that they are fictions, you may think that they are works of fiction, but real. they are real. They are real. Yeah. And they have their covens, they have their meetings, they have their staff planning at night. If you and I allow Wait God it. to disturb our nights for prayer, we can have undisturbed days walking in victory. Can y'all put up Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 28? Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 Good teaching, through 28. It says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, while everyone was sleeping, while everyone was sleeping, while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the weeds also appeared. Right. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? It says, an enemy did this, he replied. Understand, beloved, that the enemy plants bad seed at night. Mm. When God, wait, mm, whenever God warns you about something, that means you still have an opportunity to change it. Whenever God wakes you up at night and says pray, just start praying. Start praying. If you Hallelujah. don't know what to pray, then just pray the Lord's Prayer until God tells you what to pray. If you don't know what to pray, pray in your tongue, in your heavenly language, and God will intercede for you with groans and utterances that you do not understand. But understand, beloved, the enemy tries to surround you at night. But look at your name and say, the enemy shall not surprise me again in Jesus' mighty name. So here we go. Early in the morning. Someone say early in the morning. Early in the morning. Servant of the holy man got out and went out. Surprise! <laughs> Horses and chariots surrounded the city. The young man exclaimed, oh master, what shall we do? Mm. Look at verse 16. Elisha said, don't worry don't about worry. it. Y'all missed that. Don't, don't worry about it. There are more on our side mm. than on their side. Elbow your neighbor say, don't worry about it. Don't worry. There are more on our side. Put on their side. Put up slide number five. Elbow somebody to tell them majority rules. Baby. Majority <laughs> rules. Romans 8 and 31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Second Chronicles 32 and 8 says, He may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our God to help us fight our battles. First Samuel 17 and 45 says, You come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord our Almighty, the God of Israel, and you have to fight. Look at your neighbor and say, God plus me is a majority. What you say is a majority. Then Elisha prayed. Oh God, open his eyes mm. and let him see. Does not James say that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much? Did not Jesus say in his initial sermon in Luke 4 and 18 that I've come to bring about recovery of sight to the blind? Did not he fall right in Ephesians 1 and 18 that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the gospel? Then Elijah prayed. Beloved, this must be the prayer of every saint of God who lives on the planet. Lord, open their eyes that they might see. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 3, even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel and the glory of God who is the image of God. This is why we must pray for the Lord to open eyes. Yes. Because Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The next time you're in company with somebody who gets discouraged, who gets disturbed, who gets annoyed, when you start doing your God thing, then you need to pray for God to open their eyes that they might see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said in John 11 and 40, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
Jesus. John 1 and 51, he says, Verily and truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. John 3 and 3, Jesus said, Verily and truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Mm. Acts chapter 26 and 18, Paul is quoting what Jesus said to him to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God so that they may receive forgiveness of sin and a place among those who are sanctified by the faith. So Elijah prayed, oh God, open his eyes. It yeah. says the eyes of the young man were open and he saw a wonder. Yeah. My, my, my. Tell somebody you're about to see a wonder. You're about to see a wonder. The whole mountainside mm. was full of chariots and horses surrounding Elijah. God, may you open up our eyes. Somebody lift your hands and say, Father, Father, open my eyes that I might see. Somebody say it again. Father, open my eyes that I might see. And it reminds me of Numbers chapter 22 and 31, where the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing there with his sword drawn. Beloved, there is so much that has been right in front of you and me this whole time, but we can't see it. Some of us walked in fear because we could not see the victory. I need somebody to lift your hands and say, God's got me surrounded. Somebody say, hey, God's got me surrounded. I can prove it to you from scripture. Psalm 139 and 5, the New Century Version says, you are all around me, in front and in back, and you have put your hands on me. Tell somebody, God's all around me. God's all around me. God, I will not walk in fear because God is all around me. The thing that thinks it has me surrounded, God has it surrounded. So when the Armenians attack, Elisha prayed to God, strike these people blind. And God struck them blind, just as Elisha said. Isn't it amazing? One person he's praying, open their eyes that they might see. To another, he's praying, take away their vision. Elisha prayed to God with the Armenians attack because Elisha already knew that God was there. The Armenians thought they were coming against Elisha, when in reality they were coming against the God of the angel armies. Elisha was not just praying to God, but he was pulling on the resources that were already available to him. And will somebody say, use your Holy Ghost resources. Did not God promise that he made every enemy into your footstool? Then Elisha cried out in 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 19. He says, not that way, this city. Follow me and I'll lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them into Samaria. In other words, now the enemy is having to lean on Elisha. Ah. Those that came to attack him are now having to depend on them. And so he leads them away from Dothan and he leads them right to the capital of Israel, the city of Samaria. I need somebody to say, God can trap your enemies. Put up slide number six. God can trap your enemies. As they enter the city, verse 20, Elisha prayed, open their eyes so they can see where they are. Hmm. God opened their eyes. They looked around. They were trapped in Samaria. My, my, my. When Elisha prayed for God to open the eyes of the Arameans so they could see, they looked around and found that they were trapped. It may look like. <laughs> what you say? Say it, God. Somebody help me finish that. It may. <laughs> Somebody needs to say that again. It may look like you need to cry out in the spirit right now and tell every enemy against your destiny. This is not going to end like you think it's going to end. You need to call it out in the spirit. It's not going to end like you think it's going to end. It's not going to end in foreclosure. It's not going to end in homelessness. It's not going to end in unemployment. It's not going to end in depression. It's not going to end in doubt. It's not going to end in you back on drugs. It's not going to end as you as an alcoholic. It's not going to end with you back on the pole. It's not going to end like you think it. I need somebody to speak back into the atmosphere right now. Let every enemy and denizen of darkness know it's not going down like you think it's going down because I have the victory. You will not trap me, but I will trap you because I'm surrounded by the Most High God and the armies of heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 In the morning, the Arameans thought that they had surrounded Elisha. Mm. By the evening, Elisha had them surrounded. Mm. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody, if you don't get anything out of this message, know that God's going to turn your situation around. Yeah. Know that God is going to flip it and reverse it. And know that it's not going to take God long to do it. If I'm talking to you, 
throw your hand up and shout hallelujah. Ah, my, my, my. Glory. I've got good news for somebody. Good news. I've got good news for somebody. News. I don't know who this is for, but if you think it might be for you, lift your hands. Every Armenian in your life are about to find out that it's not going to end like they thought it was. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going down like you think. Is there anybody here bold enough to stand up and say when the dust settles and the smoke clears, I will still be standing. I will still be standing. I will still be standing. Encourage your neighbor to be there. You will still be standing. You will still be standing. Tell somebody, open your eyes. Open your eyes. But Jesus said I was his. Tell somebody, the enemy thought he had me. But Jesus said I was his. Y'all got to read this. Y'all got to read this. At the appointed time, let me give you a background on this, and this is what I'm going to say. The king of the north kept attacking the king of the south and kicking his butt over and over and over and over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. The king of the north invaded the south and kicked his butt over and over and over again. But the Bible says, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 29, at the appointed, at the appointed time, time. Uh -huh. tell us why God's got a time set yes. to bring you out. Some of those defeats were just to teach you how to fight. Nothing helps you learn how to fight like a good butt whooping. Come on, God. Because once you get your butt whooped one time, you make up in your mind that I will never, ever, never get my butt whooped like that again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Nothing teaches you how to fight than a good butt whooping. It says at the appointed time, he will invade the South again. It says, but this time, oh, the outcome will be different than what it was before. Elbow somebody and say, even if you failed the first time, get up and do it again. This time, it's going to work. This time, the outcome will be different. Is there anybody here who can give God a praise for a different outcome? Look at your neighbor and say, this time, the outcome will be different than what it was before. If you believe in give God the glory, if you believe in give God the honor, if you believe in give God the praise. You and I may have lost some earlier battles, but every Armenian in your life needs to know that the Almighty God has granted you and me a different outcome. Somebody shout a different outcome. Somebody shout a different outcome. Somebody shout a different outcome. Now ask me this question and I promise I'll let you go. Say, how did he get a different outcome, Blow? How did he get a different outcome, Blow? I'm glad you asked me that. Put my slide up, slide number seven. He got a different outcome. Through the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Please notice what Elisha did in verse 17. Elisha prayed. Please notice what Elisha did in verse 18. Elisha prayed. Please notice what Elisha did in verse 19. Elisha prayed. Elisha prayed. And by the time we get to verse 20, the enemy who thought he had Elisha is now surrounded and trapped in the capital of Israel. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse 29, this time come only out by prayer. The Bible says in James 5 and 17 that Elijah was a human being just like you and me. He prayed and the rain stopped. He prayed and the rain started. The Bible it says in John 17 and 15 that Jesus' prayer for us is that not that he would take them out of the world, but that he would protect us from that wicked one. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you got to pray. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor, you got to pray. Is there anybody here who knows that you got to push? What does that mean? That means you got to pray until something happens. I need somebody to jump up on your feet and say, pray until something happens. Just pray until God opens the door. Pray until God makes the way. Pray until God takes the enemies under your feet. Is there anybody here who knows that prayer changes things? Is there anybody here who can declare, I understand what prayer can do. If I pray, God will answer me. If I pray, God will open doors for me. Is there anybody here who can lift your hands and say, neighbor, neighbor. my prayers will pray. give me the victory. My prayers will give me a breakthrough. My prayers will open doors for me. If there ain't anybody here who can stand in your feet and say, that's why, that's why, that's why we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Touch your neighbor on the shoulder and say, neighbor, 
Come on to this altar this morning. 
about Jesus. And then act like this is the price is right. We won't know whether it's them or you, but the right person will be brought into fellowship. Everybody's asking me what to say. You have a church home.